fish and sticks is what I call this, fish and sticks. So any kind of cooking you do, um, you need to use non-toxic wood. If, if, if the food's in contact with the stick, it needs to be non-toxic, which is why I've picked out hazel, okay? So I'll just use my tools to prepare the sticks. And you'll notice I'm keeping my hand this side of the blade. Again, if that jumps, it isn't going to go very far, not end up in my hand. So that's the first stick. That'll wait. I'm going to prepare my sticks. I'm going to remove the bark and I'm going to do that using the outside of my knife, like so. Any little side branches just nick off when the sap starts flowing the bark will come off easier. Clean that up. Again, keep your knife right, right out in front of you, not, not here where, the, where your archeries are. And if you do any bushcraft, try and do a, a nice job of it. So take time again. Some of the prettiest crafts I've seen in bushcraft people have taken hours over so take your time now this piece isn't in contact with the fish but I'm just going to tidy it up so I'm just going to cut round to the inner bark and then just use the back of my knife just to tidy it all up you're doing it too quick so just make a nice job of it so it's nice it looks nice there's a difference between survival skills and bushcraft survival skills is like someone's got hypothermia and you've got a few minutes to get it get the problem sorted out whereas bushcraft is more likely something you're going to depend on for, for living with like basketry so no one's hungry here, so we can take our time. So that's that. Now I'm going to hit the top of that, so I'm going to bevel it. Like so. Then I'm going to use my axe. And uh, again, using my workbench, I'm going to just make a point, three-sided point. First stick ready to go. Right, just leave that there. Now I'm going to prepare the second stick. So it's still a piece of hazel. Now I'm taking the bark off to make it more hygienic. You can use any species which isn't toxic, like willow, ash. but not you. I'm just going to put a little point in one end. And the same with that end. You'll see why in a minute. It'll all come together. <laughs> okay, so you've got your two sticks. So that's that. Now I'm going to show you the fish preparation. Again, I'm using that same branch I cut, so no more new trees. You know, use it, use uh, use the same resources. And I've put the fish down on a bed of hazel because it keeps it off the dirty floor. So it's so it's you know it's our food, so keep it clean. And this is just a shop-bought uh, trout rainbow tray, trout. 
but you know there's ponds there's rivers around around the uh, woodland so if you're a fisherman you might might want to catch a trout and uh, this has already been butchered already gutted out it's good to remove the bloodline because that can sometimes taint the flavor and uh, I'm going to cut his head off and I'm going to show you how to do that by going around the gills so use the point of the knife and go around don't try not to cut through the bones because that'll blunt the knife Then I'm going to score down to the, down around each bone. Just follow down and go with the grain of the fish. So I'm going to fillet it. Then pinch with your thumb and finger and, and try and pull each bone out and, and just run your fingers down the flesh so there's one side and this is one of the easiest ways to fillet a fish like this you do get the odd bone snap off it's, that is probably it's not your fault it's probably the way that the fishmonger is cut into it to be honest so like I say if you get a fish you've caught you can do a neater job most likely so that's that. Again, don't cut around, don't, don't cut through the bone, cut round. Just take his head off, like so. And then twist. And there's his head. And you could keep that um, to make a fish stew, to make, make a soup. Um, I'll probably put it out for the fox. <laughs> but there you go. So then we're left with this flesh. And just check down, see if there's any little bones. And I'm just going to make an incision, and I've gone right through with my knife. Yep. There's the flesh. Before I feed that through, I'm just going to put my main stick in the ground. And I'm just seeing which way the wind's going and the heat in the wind is going off to the east. So I'm going to whack it in there. It wants to be about five inches away from the fire. Not right on top of the fire. You want it to cook reasonably slow. You don't want any flame to catch it. And it's, it's inserted like so. So that is about five seconds until it gets too hot to remove my hand away. And that'll just cook slowly. If I wanted to cook it a, a bit faster, I could always move, pick up two sticks and move, it, move the fire closer. There you go, fish and sticks. <laughs>